about the realities of being a new YouTuber. In this video, I will share with you my personal life experience being a new YouTuber. What were the struggles I had, the challenges I had to overcome, what is life really like being a new YouTuber, and what is it in for you if you are aspiring to be a YouTuber. Do watch on to the end of the video because that's where I will share with you some learnings that I have gained through my 7 months of experience being a new YouTuber and what you can take home for yourself and apply it to yourself. Especially so if you want to become a YouTuber yourself or probably you're just studying. When I first started out YouTubing, I thought that I could actually escape the 9 to 5 grind but I realized that how wrong am I? Because after I started YouTube, I realized that I actually do still spend a lot of time creating content for YouTube and of course on my other social media accounts. And the 9 to 5 grind is almost actually similar. In fact, I realized that sometimes I spend even more time because sometimes and I'll be thinking about what content should I create or even over the weekends, my mind would actually still be very active thinking about what content can I talk about? What are the trends? I was doing my research on what were people searching for? What topics can I talk about? What videos can I make for my YouTube channel? When we talk about you having some more free time for yourself, it is still quite a lot of time to be spent on creating your YouTube content. When I first started out my YouTube journey, it was actually quite lonely. And I believe it is also the case for many YouTubers out there when they first start out because it is highly unlikely any YouTuber will start out with a team of their own. So from the start, I did almost everything on my own except for some discussions with my husband and he helped me out here and there. You know, you have to wear many hats just being a YouTuber. First, you need to be your own creative director. You need to think about what creative content you can create. You need to think about what is the script. You need to probably write your own script, drill it in your head, what to say, what not to say. You need to think about the videography. So you need to be a videographer. You also need to go and buy your own equipment, set up your own equipment to videograph. And after that, you still need to do your video editing. You still need to look at how to post the videos, your captions and whatever. So you also need to think about your budgeting, your finances. Because right from the start, you're probably not going to be monetizing your channel so fast. So you're going to be your own finance manager as well. So being a YouTuber, especially at the start, you have to wear many hats and the journey can be quite lonely. That is until when you have managed to build your own team and you have a team to collaborate with or you collaborate with other YouTubers. That's when the journey gets a little bit more interesting rather than just being you yourself alone and the camera, which you cannot also see the audiences behind the camera. For a start, it was actually quite a steep learning curve for me because I sucked at video editing. I had to learn the video editing tool from scratch. I watched tons and tons of YouTube video how to do the editing myself. But of course, fast forward to now, I actually hire a video editor to do the editing work for me now. I also had to learn about camera equipment. What are the settings I can do? My lighting equipment and even how to talk to a camera where the camera does not respond to you. So of course, for many people, when they first start a new job or even a new business, the learning curve is equally steep. So to me, the steep learning curve is acceptable because every new venture that a person starts out, it will always be a steep learning curve. Sometimes after I created a video, I felt that mm, this video seems not too bad. But after I posted the video, I realized that next day, when I clicked open my YouTube studio to see Ah, 30 views. Sometime down the road, when I went in to check again, the same video, less than 300 views. So sometimes, you know, your expectations could be this high, but the reality is very low. So there were many times where I was actually feeling very disappointed and dejected because I felt that, oh, that video is pretty good, but somehow the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm, is not working or viewers or viewers just didn't like the video or, or probably the content is not quality enough for viewers to like it or to subscribe to my channel. So honestly, it can be quite disappointing at many times because you have put in, especially myself, I have put in a lot of time, effort, energy, a lot of thinking process into creating one video but only to realize that the results is really subpar. 
So as a new YouTuber, you have to be able to accept these mini, mini, small little, I, I don't know if you call it failures, but disappointments. At least to me, it's a disappointment. But the surprising thing is, over time, as I go through disappointments after disappointments, I kind of build up the resilience to kind of accept that this is normal, right? Because I've watched a lot of YouTube veterans, you know, they mentioned that right from the start when they first started out, their videos didn't have much views as well. So all this keeps encouraging me that, well, I am not the rare case that, you know, the videos are not getting enough views, but it's just that the time has not been long enough for you to see results yet. So you must understand and be able to accept that from the start, you, you might be facing all these disappointments along the way and you need to build your resilience for that. Sometimes I feel that, you know, this social media, YouTube can be a little bit unhealthy at times. Why do I say that? Because I, re I noticed that sometimes my mood for the day can be affected by how many likes I manage to garner or how many new subscribers I have or maybe a positive comment from someone that they find that my video is inspiring and it literally brighten up my day. But when I see certain posts that there are zero comments or zero likes, I feel sad for the day. So you see, I kind of get on this emotional roller coaster day by day. Sometimes I feel that it can be quite unhealthy. So it is important to break away this chain or rather break away from this habit of, you know, determining or putting my level of happiness on the number of likes, comments, subscriptions. You need to know how to draw the line against this because your happiness does not rely on somebody else's likes, comments or subscriptions. You know, there were many times when I was just chatting with my husband and we feel that Hmm, we know, yes, YouTube's potential is unlimited and there are so many successful cases out there that they have millions of subscribers, they have so many videos, good quality videos, but we realize that this can only happen over time. Your YouTube channel will not be an overnight success. It takes time to build and during this time for it to bear fruits, can you accept the downside of your YouTube channel? Things like disappointments, things like you're not going to be able to monetize your channel that fast because to be a YouTube partner program, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in the last 365 days. So essentially, it means that most people might take a little while to monetize the channel. And even if they start to monetize the channel, how much money are we talking about here? And in order to make a very decent income, how much time and effort and energy is needed to reach there? And when you are here now versus where you want to be in future for your YouTube channel, this period of time that you're going to go through, can you accept that? What if it takes six months? What if it takes one year? Can you accept the downside that you have to go through for the six months? So to share, because I was working in a corporate job for many years before this, I was working eight years in the US MNC in the technology sector. So to me, getting a paycheck at, at the end of the month is a habit already. And because I'm a sales show, I get commission for every sale that I do. So to me, is if I put in this amount of effort, I'm going to get paid the same amount um, back in my bank account at the end of the month. But it is not the same case for YouTube right now, right? So for many of you out there who wants to start your own YouTube channel, you know that it takes time, all right, to monetize the channel. And you're not going to be seeing a regular income stream in yet when you're still early in this career of yours. So you have to learn to accept that. And can you accept that, right? That the income is not going to come in that fast. I noticed that some YouTube idols that I follow, I realized that many of them have actually started as long as 10 years ago. So when I first started out my channel, I was doing a lot of yoga related um, content. I did yoga sequences and when I saw my peers, I wouldn't say my peers, sorry. When I see the veterans in this yoga topic, they are there for 10 years, some 5 years, some 3 years. They are 
and their channels have millions of followers. So I thought to myself, in order to catch up with these veterans, am I going to take 10 years? And even if I take 10 years, these veterans are going to be way ahead of me. But of course, you know that we don't want to compare because they are there for so long. We want to compare with ourselves. But for me to reach the level that I want, it's going to take years. So I try to pivot myself to create, to, to include a lot more other content other than just yoga. So along the way, I kept pivoting and trying new things. But well, you know, after so much effort, and after seven months. So my first YouTube video that I published was on the 10th of November, 2023. So today as I record this, it was on the 9th of June, 2024. That's about seven months of YouTubing. Sadly, my channel, after posting 100 videos of which 33 are long form videos, the rest are shorts, I managed to get 202 subscribers. Well, if you ask me, Honestly, I feel that it is. This results is somewhat disappointing. I was hoping to have a lot more, but I know that I just have to continue to pivot and find what works for the channel, what works for viewers that they enjoy watching. Some little nuggets for you to take away home is that, you know, if you're in your teens, if you are in your 20s, if your opportunity cost is low, actually, it is good that you know you you can go ahead and start a YouTube channel. When you're studying, you have nothing to lose. After you study, you just do your YouTubing, you do your recording of your YouTube videos. When you're in your 20s, when you have nothing much to lose, you can do full-time if you want to. But if you're in your 30s or later, you have an opportunity course, you are probably in a good paying job and you want to consider YouTube, my advice to you would be to try it as a side hustle. Do it as a part-time first. Some of my YouTube idols, I realized that they started out YouTube as a part-time hobby. It was their hobby, it was not their main job. But after doing it for some time, they realized that, oh, their channel started getting traction, people started to subscribe to them, and they were monetizing on their channel. So it came to a pivoting point when they realized that, oh, if because they have many subscribers already, so if they went into full-time, they can do an even better job. And that's when they pivoted to resign from their full-time job, and they went into YouTube from part-time to become full-time. So my advice to you is, even for myself, I felt that sometimes doing it as a side hustle might be a good choice to start off YouTube. Because along the way, you will discover what works for you in the channel. The niche that you started out may not be the niche at the end of the day that makes you the money or gives you the most subscribers. It could be a different niche along the way that you discovered. Alright, so I've seen some YouTubers, they mentioned this day. Their topic that the niche that they first started out was not the niche that made them go viral. They pivoted along the way. So for you, as you continue to produce your YouTube videos, you can discover your niche and what is the niche that works for your channel along the way. And two, you cannot do everything on your own. You need to outsource. I learned this the hard way because when I first started out on YouTube, I can tell you it was a hard time because I was spending so much time doing the video editing that I kind of feel that I neglected my, my children bonding time because I wanted to churn out videos fast enough to publish it on YouTube. So I ate into my precious time. So after about two, three months, I decided, especially after encouragement from my husband, I decided to outsource the video editing to a editor. And this way I had more time for myself, for my family, and also to think about more content on my YouTube and social media platform. So I will really advise you, if you want to do this seriously, you need to outsource. But if for a start, you don't have to outsource right from the start. So because of my initial experience of editing the video myself, this actually helped me to communicate with my video editor better because I could tell him certain effects uh, that can be used. Uh, I understand certain uh, ways that videos can be made, the captions, uh, the transitions. All this actually helped. Because if you do not know how to edit the video yourself, it might be more difficult for you to communicate with the variables of the video with the editor. All right, so try out video editing at the start, but outsource it out subsequently. You can either hire a freelancer or pay, pay them per video basis, 
or if you're really serious into this, hire a full-time dedicated video editor. This is like your business. So treat this as an investment into your business. Now for all new YouTubers out there, remember that you are not alone on this arduous journey because many people just like me is experiencing the ups and downs that you're experiencing right now being a new YouTuber. Alright, so three key takeaways I would really want to share is that one, if you want to do this seriously, you might want to try being a YouTuber on a part-time basis first. Only if you think that you can go through all the emotional ups and downs, you can go through some of the disappointments when you know your video does not get enough views, you do not get enough subscribers, when you find that your results does not equate to the effort that you have put in, whether your heart can take it, whether you have the tenacity to go through this, only then go into full-time YouTubing. Secondly, if you do not know what is the niche you can do right now, it's okay because you can always discover it along the way on your YouTube journey. Nobody knows right from the start. I mean, a lot of people don't know what they are good at right from the start. They only know it after they have tried it, experimented it, practiced it and realized that, oh, I actually have a talent for something. Yeah, that's where they discover along the way, right? And thirdly, you need to learn to outsource, right? Because we only have 24 hours a day. We only have a pair of hands. You cannot be an octopus trying to do everything yourself. You need to learn how to automate things or get another human being to help out with different tasks of you. Focus on what you do best. And those that you have difficulties or need a long time to complete it. For example, some people are not good at video editing. You can outsource to a video editor. If you're not good at speaking, do you need help with that? Take on a coach to teach you how to talk better. You know, outsource whatever tasks that you need so that you can achieve your goals sooner. And remember, new YouTubers out there, we are on this game together. We are on this journey together. I hope that this can help to encourage and inspire any YouTubers out there. And remember, you're not alone. Anytime you know you want to talk to somebody, just drop me a message, leave in your comments. And as with all YouTubers, we need you as a viewer to support us. And you can easily do so by subscribing to us. Give a like, write down your comments. What do you think of this? What any encouraging words you may have? What are the other advice you would give to other YouTubers who may be watching this video. And thank you for your time. I hope to see you around in my next video. See you.